and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the upsurge minor league my name is orbital i'm joined here by guster posey and tonight we are bringing you i believe week six of the mountain league games and i am super excited to be able to be casting these two teams we have banana gaming versus balji and the boys how are you doing today guster posey i'm doing pretty good how about yourself I'm doing good. I'm excited. These two teams are in the race for the playoff position, both sitting at three and one. Uh, I do want to correct myself. It is actually week five. So both these teams, though, both of these teams, though, uh, they are making a run towards the playoffs, both sitting at three and one. And actually all four of the top teams right now are sitting at three and one. The only thing separating them is a game difference between the sets. Yeah, currently right now, Balji and the boys does technically hold first place due to their 7-2 and two game record, only losing to Anonymous Rose Quartz. Uh, meanwhile, Why Are You Running is 7-3, and three, and the other teams have six game wins each that are all tied in that first place. So Balji and the boys technically in first, and they next week will have a bye week due to the team they're scheduled to play dropping out of UML. So, you know, if they can pick up the win here tonight, they're looking in good position coming for a playoff spot. Yeah, the big thing is going to be, you know, do they decide to uh, get that final push, you know, the first place seeding, or do they drop into one of the lower standings? Uh, however, keep in mind that both sides have gotten this uh, benefit. Uh, Banana Gaming also were able to be on the receiving end of that automatic 2-0 win. Uh, so both the teams are going to have this uh, benefit back and forth, but it'll be very interesting to see what they can do and uh and how they want to implement that because again a playoff seating spot is very important uh, however very interesting uh recently i believe it was patch 10.5 uh very excited to see that drop uh just two days ago um and with that we did have some interesting changes uh notably uh technical changes to orn as well as nico and a few other champions that are pretty prevalent in the current meta yeah, and the Orn one is the big one. You know, he's been pick and ban in competitive and professional play basically since 10.3. And what, what ended up changing with him is the percent health damage on his brittle procs uh, went from a maximum of 20.5% of a target's maximum health down to 18%. They also changed how quickly he's able to upgrade not only his own items, but anyone else's items by one level each, with his starting at 13 instead of 12. So Still Orn, still gives you all those free stats, but you just got to wait a little longer and he does a little bit less percent health. But overall, I don't think this uh, gets rid of Orn at all. I think he's still very strong and still just provides so much for a team that if he if he's up and you don't draft him, I think you're kind of crazy unless you got some crazy <laughs> counter pick up your sleeve for him or something. I tend to agree. Again, 2.5, yes, it is a nerf to his damage output, but still he is a monster in that top side. Uh, now, talking about another top lane significance, uh, the turret plating was actually changed as well. So if you want to walk us through that, I mean, that changes a lot of the tactics that a lot of these teams have, you know, how they want to make rotations and how they want to make plays for the macro game style. Yeah, so the turret plates grant more gold and take more damage from melee champions. So, you know, they they add this range resistance to them. So range champions actually deal less damage to the plates. You know, the gold uh, is worth more now, and the bulwark resistances get stronger the more people that are around. So it's just, they just kind of try to add things to make top lane more, uh, more significant is what they say as we are getting into draft here. Another couple things they did, they changed Blade of the Ruin King to where uh, melee champions deal 12% of the target's current health and damage for Blade of the Ruin King. Still 8% for range, but it's definitely an interesting thing because, you know, you think about champions that build Blade of the Ruin King top and you don't think of melee champions anymore. It used to be like Jax would go Blade of the Ruin King into Trinity Force and then pure tank and that'd be all the damage he would need, but... That sort of style has dropped off, but with that buffed, it's a pretty significant one. We may see champions that are able to use it uh, pop back up. Yeah, and while we were going through that, we did have the first five bands coming in on the table. Banana Gaming did ban away the Vladimir, Diana, and Set. All three high priority champions in that mid top with Set running the top jungle. Uh, Balji and the boys, though, banning away the J4, Orn, and Misfortune. So three big team fight champions directly taken off the table. They're just saying, all right, 
we just don't want to deal with that you know let's go our style so very nice fans and the immediate caitlin pickup so banana gaming coming out the gate with that caitlin yeah, and Caitlyn is still a very strong champion when played correctly. You know, you're able to abuse the range early on, get those early tower plates, even with the the changes that make them better for melee. You know, you Caitlyn, long enough range where you can still poke them down and the immediate follow up with the Senna Nautilus. So we'll see if they end up doing the, the Senna style where the Senna takes the support item and the support actually farms because you give that Nautilus extra gold and it's like top lane Nautilus, the horrors of those days where he's actually unkillable, does a pretty decent amount of damage. But look at looking at the Banana Gaming Comp, they have a lot of long range siege potential with Caitlyn and Cassio and then Leona for engage. Yeah, and the Syndra locked in behind it with the Balji uh, and the boys saying, all right, we have the Nautilus in the Senate. Now we have that frontline damage. And now the target focus is going to swing into that jungle and top lane potential. Uh, so possibly a couple bans coming out. You know, the Sejuani ban is uh, some top priorities, but Gragas and Elise taking the forefront here uh, for both these squads. So early game junglers being taken off the field. Yeah, and it kind of makes me think that they want Sejuani because Sej isn't the best early game jungler compared to things like Gragas, Elise, Rek'Sai, things like Olaf or Lee Sin, even the Jarvan. Uh, they can kind of bully Sejuani around early on a little bit and slow her progress down towards being the little Miss Piggy everyone knows and either loves or loathes. Uh, gonna throw in that Vein Band just for top lane Vein, so that's always fun. But we'll see if that Sejuani priority is there or not, because I think for both of these team comps it would actually fit in rather well. But Trundle is available, the traditional counter too. So we'll see if they decide to go that way or not with their jungle pit. Yeah, and instead they go again for that early engagement, the Lee Sin, the Blind Monk himself making an appearance on the Rift. Going to be seeing some interesting insect kicks if he can pull it off. Uh, but that does set them up for early engages, and when you pair that with lanes that all have CC, such as the Senna, Nautilus, and Syndra, it is a beautiful matchup. Uh, on the far side, we do see the Sejuani picked up, as well as Darius for that top lane match. So the Master of Noxia himself coming out and showing us some prowess here. So a very strong frontline composition, Banana Gaming have locked it. Yeah, and you know, you look at the priority in the lanes. Darius should pretty much have priority in the lanes, especially with Vayne Band, unless uh, Baljeet and the boys play Quinn. Ooh. But Irelia is a matchup that can win into Darius, but it can also lose very hard, depending on how things go. So looking at this, it looks like Banana Gaming wants to try to you know, because Cassio's not super strong early on, just try to chill out a little bit, let the Caitlyn Leona and let the Darius win their lanes, let Sejuani hit level 6, let Cassio start scaling before they really start doing things here. Because the power of Syndra, Lee Sin, and Senna Nautilus can apply a ton of pressure and find some kills early on that Sejuani will have a hard time answering, and Lee Sin can put out so much early game pressure that that is kind of what Baljeet and the boys looking like they're going for here. And you kind of think, what's the best way to play against Darius? Gank him. And who's one of the best junglers at ganking early? Lee Sin. So I'm looking to top lane here to see the action. Oh, yeah. And I mean, once you either see a Darius or Aurelia, I mean, if they can start running around the lanes, it just gets scary. Dunk or not. And uh, Zion will have some fun in that top lane if they do see that uh, aggression. But you know, looking towards that mid lane as well. The Cassiopeia and Syndra is a matchup that we've seen tried and true over and over again. With the changes recently, do you think Cassiopeia wins that, or do you think uh, the Syndra will have an easier time in that mid lane? You think Syndra would still have a good time during laning phase? Um, overall, Syndra is just a stalwart in the mid lane. She's, you know, a traditional stat check champion where if she's strong enough, she'll do just fine. If she starts falling behind, though, it's a different story. And, but she has the, the tools on her team to succeed. She has the early game jungler compared to the more mid game and late game jungler. And, you know, Cassio runs through the mana pool very quickly early on. One thing though, is that they did change how casting skill shots at max range works for things like the Syndra Q. So if Harrison is not, you know, practiced with these changes, might throw him off a little bit, because I have been playing with some people who play Syndra, and they're kind of going, yeah, it's kind of annoying to relearn these out-of-range cast things that Riot did. 
So we'll see if that ends up coming into play. But otherwise, you know, Syndra should do just fine early on into Cassio, but Cassio, that late game scaling monster. Yeah, and that's uh, always a terror, you know, the one shot, the uh, hashtag skill montage coming out <laughs> from a Syndra is always beautiful to see. Uh, however, we are moving into the last little picks, and as they lock it in, you know, as you stated, the Senna Nautilus is one to worry about. Uh, one that we've always questioned, you know, with the current rise and, you know, the no farm Senna. Uh, do you think we'll see that against a Caitlyn Leona? Because I feel that lends itself to a very dangerous setup if you always have the Nautilus trying to frontline at that point. It definitely does. It allows the Caitlyn Leona to throw traps down, to set up engages onto the Nautilus over and over again. It just kind of depends on what they're prioritizing. If they want their Senna to get a ton of souls, you know, I think Bang this last week in LCS had like 160 some souls during the game that he played doing it. And when you are actually farming a Senna, your soul output will drop massively. Um, you may be lucky to get 40 to 60 souls, depending on how things go, how many dragons your team gets, how often you're on jungle camps when they die, things like that. So, you know, I've seen people do farm Senna and I've seen a lot of people do no farm Senna. So I think it just kind of comes down to how much you're prioritizing her getting to that insane 700, 725 range. Uh, right. Against a team cup like this, it's probably pretty beneficial though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. When you're playing against guys like this, it's just like, all right, I really don't want to deal with the Cassiopeia. I don't want to deal with the Chwani. What can I do? Um, however, I do want to get your final thoughts. You know, both these teams have pretty stacked team fight compositions. Who do you think has the easier conditions to, you know, really pop off and take control of this first game? Uh, I think it's the side of Banana Gaming. They have the scaling advantage here, and, you know, if if Irelia doesn't get going, the champion has a hard time functioning in a game if she's not, you know, somewhat strong. LS would call her a sinner champion, where she has to get going <laughs> to do anything. Um, and the just Cassio Caitlyn is such a strong late game, and Sejuani, Anytime she gets buffed just a little bit back up is tier one in the jungle, always in forever. Leona has been really good uh, just overall. So, you know, for the side of Baljeet and the boys, they have the tools to make it happen, but they have to get it rolling early. All right. Well, we'll see if they can pull it off. But once again, we will be going to a short commercial break uh, as we go over one of our fantastic sponsors, Sector 6. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game number one between Banana Gaming and Baljeet and the boys. Don't go anywhere. With the vision. A vision of quality, a vision of uniformity. We took the time to create something familiar yet refreshing, something with a bit of change. Designed to fit any brand's unique vision.
Everybody knows that I'm breaking down. Everybody knows I ain't faking now. Everybody knows my heart's faking now. Yeah, she hates me now. I made mistakes, but now I don't ever want to be alone. I don't really ever feel at home. On my own, in the zone. That's the only way I know. Feeling low, about to blow back up. I won't ever let the doubt creep in. Gotta pop a couple more aspirin. I don't think I'll ever let you win. Easier to break it off, best friends. I don't really understand myself. I don't really understand, need help. I don't want to be left on the shelf. Couldn't even hear me if I yelled. It's so cold. I'm alone, I'm alright It's so cold outside I'm alone Always feel like I could break now, but I never let it take me to that place now. I won't ever let my thoughts get away now. I got better things to do, picking fate now. I just wanna be the best, call me great now. I don't know if I'm okay or insane now. I remember better days on the playground, hoping I can find my way to Even when I'm feeling down, I fight. Even when I don't know what is right. I'ma pick a side and I'ma take pride. I will decide my fate and I will never let them tell me who I am. If you try to shake me, I'll be damned. Planted on the ground is where I stand. Never give up, that was always the plan. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the first game of Banana Boys versus Baljeet and uh, Banana Gaming and Baljeet and the Boys. I'm very sorry. On the blue side, we do have Banana Gaming with Dunkernaut in the top lane, E Girl Jungle in the jungle side, Gangplank Bot in mid lane, Dinks in the ADC role, and Noobs running up the support. And for Baljeet and the Boys, we got J Zions, Zions, I guess we'll just call him Zions <laughs> in the top lane, Ace ringing the bell in the jungle. Harrison on Syndra in the mid lane, Archfiend 23 on Senna, and 221 Savage on the Nautilus support. And both these teams just fanning out standard five point. Yeah, the taunting is always a good way to try and bait out some information. Uh, it is not meant there just to annoy you, although it is. I won't deny it that. It does a very good job of that. Yeah. Um, however, again, the five point is pretty standard overall. And knowing who has gone where, I don't think. Uh, either jungler has really shown anything since it's a standard five point. Uh, looks like we'll be getting a very standard uh, leash for both junglers. Yeah, and Senna did get the Dorn's Blade, so not going for the Spectral Sickle. So this will be a farming Senna. So we'll see how many souls she ends up with as things go along. She already got the free one for auto queuing Leona there. So already off to a head start. And, you know, we talked about it in Champs Like, we're going to see what Ace is going to be able to do on this Lee Sin pick because. You know, I'm sure everyone's had these leasons in their solo queue games who just, like, try to power farm and accomplish nothing, and nothing ends up happening, and you're sitting there going, come on, man, you're leasing, you gotta do stuff, something early. And that's kind of what this team comp's gonna rely on, just due to the scaling advantage that uh, Banana Gaming has. Yep. Already fighting between all the lanes, and we were talking about it, you know, this bottom lane is gonna be pretty volatile. You see them trying to force out the lane as quickly as possible. Both laners, uh, both sides do want to hit that level 2 advantage. It looks like uh, Leona and um, Caitlyn have hit it first, but Senna and Nautilus are not too far behind, so no early aggression from either side of these teams. Yeah, and that's one thing about these two supports is that one misstep can mean you're in the enemy team's face, and neither of these champions has a reliable way out once they go in, aside from flashing, which is obviously a 5-minute cooldown and not something you want to use lightly. And it looks like uh, Sejuani and Lee Sin have both opted for a semi-clear. We see the entire top, uh, bottom side for Lee Sin completely cleared out. And we actually see a mini roam here coming in on the mid lane. Might be able to get some stuff. Harrison has wow. to flash away. A nice little gank giving pressure to Gangplank bot in that mid lane. Yeah, and that was the perfect time to go for that gank because if... Syndra still had her Scatter the Weak available, would probably not have had to flash there, would have just been able to Scatter the Weak Sejuani away, would have been fine. Instead, burns that Summoner spell, just 
you know, did get a pretty okay trade off on the Gangplank bot, but Cassio has built in sustain, so in the end, it actually works out very well for the side of Banana Gaming. Lisa had also shown, but here we go. Another gank in that mid lane. Nice scout of the week, though. Stuffs the engage. So that's going to hard push E Girl Jungle out of that mid lane once again. We see Ace hopping over the wall now, trying to get oh, some damage he, down. Oh. Nice little dodge back. Flashes back towards the mid lane safety. And the nice scout of the week once again lands on Gangplink Bot. He is taken down to about half HP, but is going to be able to walk away and still hold on to his CS advantage. Yeah, that dodge out on that resonating strike from Ean Girl Jungle was actually very crucial there. That landed would have probably killed. There's chances she gets out as Nautilus does land a hook. Yeah, Noobs actually has to flash away, but the teleport in from Gangplank Bot says no. That's going to be a slowdown as well, and Savage has to run. So Summoner's being burnt and heavy aggression coming out from both these jungles at the start. Yeah, and that Curse of the Black Mist was huge. Everyone was stuck on that Miasma, but being untargetable inside of that Black Mist, unable for Cassio to really do a whole lot there, bought them a lot of time to just walk right on out. However, that's two Sonic Waves that Ace has missed that potentially could have led to more happening. So, you know, you want to see him start landing some of these and start applying a lot more pressure as Lee Sin and actually finding some kills. Um, that is the hope of all these sins, you know, being that solo queue monster or anything of the sort. But the early aggression has yielded some results. Uh, summoners down across the board. Uh, Eagle Jungle sitting without a flash, same with Noobs, while only having earned uh, a flash from Harrison and a Knight from Savage. So, you know, early work has not uh, gone too poorly. Yeah, it does have some opportunities now these flashes are down to try and make something happen. However, the, the longer and longer it goes, especially with Lee Sin not having accomplished more than getting those spells down, there is a bit of a timer on him, so we'll see what he is going to try to do to push the advantage here just a little bit. And, you know, mid lane's on a bit of a timer too. There is a 14 CS lead right now, but there's a wave at the tower, so Gangplank Bot should be able to pick up some of that CS. But is a bit of a teleport discrepancy, considering that Dunkernaut did not even take teleport, is the ghost Darius, and Zions and Harrison still have theirs, so keep an eye out for some crazy teleport plays down here in the bottom lane, especially once pressure on this dragon starts coming out. Yeah, Infernal Dragon, everyone always wants it. Unfortunately, we're not going to see a, you know, triple or double Infernal Drake, it's just going to be the singular one. And... With the aggression, we do see a little room up to the top from Ace looking towards that Darius, but a nice word spots him out, says, all right, their jungler is on top side, and we see uh, E-Girl Jungle moving towards that bottom side, but she is going to be spotted out on a ward in the river, so both jungle positions spotted. If you hammer just a little bit. Yep, Scout of the Week and some more Spheres landing. Does pretty good damage to Gangplank Bot at this point. Just lost chapter compared to Tear the Goddess. Pretty strong power uh, for Syndra right now. You know, Cassio, more of a DPS style mage, needs some time to deal some damage. So Harrison should be doing just exactly what he's doing right now. And I thought Sedge was going for that dragon there a little bit. That would have been interesting considering... <laughs> Still level four. Yeah. I said Juani soloing Dragon at level four. That would be that'd be pretty strong, but a little bit of a duel. In the top side and Dunker not. This is one of the uh, trademark matchups where, you know, if you're good at Relia, you can dodge out of pretty much everything Darius has to offer. Yeah, built executioner's calling too, just to slow down that healing from both Conquer and Darius's Q. And even old Irelia versus Darius was one of those matchups where it could go either way, as Savage tried to go in, but hit a minion, noobs bopped him with the shield, says, get back, get back where you came from. Yeah. That was a roam down from Gangplane Bot, though, so that forced Ace to take an un, uh, an unwanted route back out. Gonna have to rotate over to his top side because his entire bottom side is completely empty. That does afford E-Girl Jungle a quick jump into the dragon pit so this could easily be a soloed dragon for banana game to start off this game 
Yeah, and Sedge can solo dragons at this point. The game just will cost a lot of her health pool to do so, but everyone coming over means that this should be pretty free and clear. And we'll see what Ace's response is. Looking like he's going to try to gank, but Darius does have the dragon surge available. Yeah, does have that available. Jumps in and gets the kick. Um, uh, uh, hmm. A little bit overextended on that kick and actually kicked him away from his team. So maybe a couple signs of uh, inexperience coming out for Ace on this Lee Sin. Yeah, it... It's just mechanical flaws at this point. He's been in the right place at the right time. He just hasn't been able to mechanically execute the correct play. So, brain is in it. Hands not so much just yet, but stun does land. Yeah, and actually hook in and a flash forward as well. And that's just going to be the kill. Dunkernaut says, all right, you brought your jungle up. I'll show you how to 1v1. Yeah, uh, did blow both his summoners, but Zion's flash did get blown as well. No Vanguard's Edge came out, however. Wasn't feeling like you really wanted to fully hard commit to it at first. Landed the stun, went in, and was just kind of sitting there, kind of unsure of if they should proceed. It's like that one episode of SpongeBob where Plankton's like, I don't know. I never think I'd get this far. <laughs> yeah, uh, watching your opponent flash away and then pull you back is always a dangerous situation. Uh, but again, a solid kill coming out for Dunkernaut in that top lane. And that also neutralizes uh, partially the Aurelia threat. If you notice, she did go uh, pure offensive in the early game. And because of that, if she does not build offensive, she's going to be even more susceptible to those ganks and to those 1v1 fights. Yeah, Sajwani does have Glacial Prison available now too, so... Oh, Doesn't like a little bit stun. of a miss. Yep, that's going to be just on the tail end. That's one of the uh, cheeky little points where it's almost a 50-50 whether it's going to actually snare them or not. <laughs> So. Yeah, if the stun did land, however, it would have been followed up by a flash petrifying gaze, you have to imagine, to continue perma-stunning Harrison down. Miasma would likely have came down, and that probably would have been a dead Syndra had that Glacial Prison landed. Yeah. Either way, again, the amount of pressure being applied by Ego Jungle to this mid lane, making sure Gangplank bot has that free farming, as Cassiopeia is their main DPS source. Uh, with the fangs going strong and, you know, being able to spam that as much as possible. You want her to have a strong CS area. And we do see a little stun in this bottom lane, Ooh, though. In trap. trap combo, so Savage taking a lot of damage. That's going to go straight into the solo flare as well. Going to go golden as it is here comes uh, Syndra. up, but here comes good root, and that's going to be a flash out, so he might not die. But an immediate trade as Syndra's here. Harrison says, all right, I'll take it. Flash as well from Archstream as he collects the two for one so far in this fight another teleport in as Zion says hello actually flashes in so jung e girl jungle is going to go down as well as the entire team of balji and the boys converge on the bottom lane to pick up three kills yeah only losing savage for that one irelia picks up a kill which is fantastic for her in that matchup and you know syndra got a kill got some assist senna ended up with a kill did blow some a lot of summoners actually so they will need to play the next few minutes out rather carefully but overall this is exactly what baljeet and the boys needed because they have to get strong and they need to press their advantage because you're still staring down cassio and caitlin later on and it's something that needs to be on their mind at all times uh just to do a quick little soul search here for senna is sitting at 24 souls so not not the same level of souls that no farm center would be, but not too bad in her own right. And definitely not, but still doing well. Again, the CS lead is uh, very close in that bottom lane between Dings and Archfiend. Uh, but the one kill in the assist will offset it just a little bit. We do see E-Girl Jungle starting up this Rift Herald directly on top of the Rift Scuttled. So yeah, there might and be Ward in the pit as well. So we'll see if they want to collapse on in. Ace can steal it. Just a matter of if he can get out afterwards. But Noob's found him. Yeah, has been found and going to be run out. But that's going to be a stun as well. Noob's does have Flash to get out of the tight situation. Bottom lane, duel of the ADCs as Dinks dodges out on a root. And Archfiend says, all right, we use our combos. Let's go back to farming. <laughs> yeah, I think BF Sword beats out uh, Man Immune at this point in the game. But does have the Swifty Boots, does Archfiend, so able to fight on his terms, actually. Able to just kind of walk away. Yeah, 15 seconds, or about 10 seconds now, 
until the ocean drake is going to come up so that's going to be a big one for either side to help with the split push game uh, as well as getting through the rest of this mid uh mid to early game i would say so going to be interesting to see what they can pull off yeah and if it ends up being mountain uh mountain drakes the rest of the time that's great for the side of banana gaming you know get your sejuani even more tanky Get Leona and Darius some extra tank stats as well as Solar Flare oh. does land. Yeah, it does. And actually, the Glacial Prison lands as well. That's just a massive wombo combo signaling Savage and Archfiend's defeat. Dings actually gets soloed out by Ace as he has to try and run, but the Glacial Stun is there as well. Noobs actually says, I still want to go in. But oh. Steven's going into a petrifying gaze. Lands on two. Immediate flash out from Harrison. And Gangplank Bot takes the kill with Harrison taking one in Retribution. Yeah, Harrison pressed the play button there to make sure that they traded evenly there. With a flash petrifying gaze, though, that oh, did not quite stun uh, Harrison. Otherwise, probably could have sold him down and actually won that fight. And it just shows you sometimes these games is just a matter of someone facing the correct direction to get stunned by a Casio. Uh, everyone has that outplay button, you know, some of them a little bit more, uh, a little bit stronger than the others. But that was an overall two for two with most of the action actually appearing around this bottom lane uh and if that's how it's going to go you know the double teleport is something that is going to be very important to watch uh for the rest of the game because of zion with that teleport as well as harrison that immediately affords a potential five on three and five on four situation which means that the dragon is going to be picked up ocean drake taken away and we have the cloud drakes coming up so a potential 30 percent cdr for either team yeah, and that would be fantastic for either team, but especially for Baljeet and the boys. More Lee Sin Kicks, more Senna Ults, more Syndra Rs, more Nautilus Rs would be very fantastic. But also on the side of Banana Gaming, having more Glacial Prisons from Sejuani, having more Petrifying Gazes available. And Solar Flare is already on a low enough cooldown to where if you add 30% more CDR on it, it's essentially up twice a fight. <laughs> really is i mean have you ever been hit by the sun twice i don't think it's fun <laughs> like it just doesn't sound fun uh, but looking at it overall uh cresting uh getting in about five seconds off of 16 minutes i mean we have not been able to take a look but we see oh man we were just talking about some nice stuff and in that top lane oh, man, zion is ghost. getting sold out the auto attacks the hemorrhaging is there and dunker not says i don't even want to use the uh <laughs> execute. i don't even want to spend the mana <laughs> yeah let me just burn one of my really important summoner spells, but he gets the solo kill. He is now 2-0 in that top side. Trinity Force completed, and he is going to take first tower of the game. Yeah, and this is something to look out for with the ghost as Glacial Prison comes out. Yeah, that's a big jump, but oh, nice into the oh. stun. Archfiend snipes it across the map. That's going to be a solo kill as Harrison now tries to run away. Almost gets pulled <laughs> in uh, out of the blast cone. But that is an unfortunate overextension from E-Girl Jungle looking for the kill to help out the team. But, I mean, you always got to be careful of that global ultimate. Yeah, and that's the thing about the Sejuani ult is when you hit it close range, the stun actually doesn't last as long as it will at longer range. You get more time, farther it ends up going out. I believe it's just at max range, I guess, it, that it is full length there. So with Merc Treads and uh potentially the tenacity rune as well that stun didn't last very long i think leeson was out of there before sedge could follow up with her arctic assault so definitely something to keep an eye on if you are e-girl jungle that ulting leeson close range probably not going to accomplish a whole lot yeah but we see a push on this bottom side four members strong that's going to be a stun under the tower though a savage walked a little bit too far he's not as angry as he wishes and just immediately gets burst out Solo Flare doesn't land on anyone as Zion jumps in, but here comes Dunker not saying hello. I can come fight as well. That's a double kill for E-Girl Jungle. Now 3, 2, and 1. Teleport coming in from Harrison. That's going to be held up as Dunker not still says hello. Harrison takes the kill with the ultimate, but that's going to be a trade for his life as well. And a 3 for 1 situation for Banana Gaming means they have control of the bottom lane. Yep, that they do should be able to take this tower with the Trinity Force Darius here as well. And yeah, Savage was just up way too close, honestly. Ended up stepping on a Caitlyn trap and just started that whole cascading effect there that ended up with two people going down just for Gangplank bot in response. And you know, we were talking about the teleports going bottom lane, but here's the thing with Darius. Ghost is up way more frequently than teleport is, so... This Ghost Darius is going to be a monster in the side lane and something that 
if Zions or Harrison cannot answer, will become another thing to worry about for uh, Baljeet and the boys, even more than just Cassio and Caitlyn hitting late game. Yeah, and I mean, taking a look at the goal differentials across the board, we're seeing a very large disparity in that top lane, about 1.5k separating the two of them. The jungle fairly even at about 200 between the two of them. Mid lane, though, swinging in favor of Harrison, 3-1-3, uh, as well as about 40 CS up, sitting with about 1.5 in his pocket. Uh, bottom lane, relatively even, only about 400 gold separates the ADCs, culminating in Banana Gaming having that uh, 1.2k lead uh, total. Yep, and second Rift Herald, I believe, will be going down here. It was his first one and it just didn't get taken the first time. <laughs> uh, I do I believe so. Uh, they had attempted to take it earlier and got stalled out. Uh, I do believe they got first one as well, but it wasn't used uh, as much as they probably would have wanted. But that is going to be the Rift Herald taken away here. That's going to be super happy for them as Dragon is coming up as well. So that Rift Herald is going to afford them a potential pushing advantage, uh, depending on what lane they want to put it in. Yeah, and E-Girl Jungle going for the Gargoyle Stone Point at this point in the game signals that they're really looking for team fights, looking for that immediate team fight power. Uh, normally in like a solo queue situation for Sejuani, you would end up going Warmogs and some more health to activate the Warmogs passive at this point of the game. But going for that stone plate just says, I need to go in, stun someone up, just oh like my gosh. Gangplank Bot did there. Yeah, I mean, they got the kill, uh, or they got the check, as Ace immediately uses a Dragon's Kick out. Does burn the Petrifying Gaze and the Ace in the hole, but gives up Dragon Pressure. So immediate rotation over, trying to get a head start on getting this Cloud Soul. Yep, Definitely we'll give a up nice the Dragon. But the fight afterwards without Petrifying Gaze might be a little risky. Yeah, here we go. Noobs actually gets rooted up. Support on support action. That's going to be the root out as well. And the ultimate, but they just don't oh, care. Solar Nix flare. up the kill, and that's going to be a solid combo going in. The ultimates come out. Vanguard's Edge completely surrounding the entire team. But it doesn't matter as Banana Gaming just say, we'll take the kills. That's going to be a nice, solid hold Ooh. as Dinks gets a lot of headshots off. But look at Archie, and Archie is completely healthy. As the rest of the team Whoa. has to run, and Archie plots short, gets a Whoa. kill, gets grounded as well. And look at the range, collecting a few kills for himself. He is now 4 1 and 6. And Baljeet and the boys are able to turn it around in a very narrow and close 3 for 3. Yeah, and you don't want to forget, Senna's does scale very well as well. You know, I've been talking about Cassio and Caitlyn a lot, but you no, know, Senna does scale very well for her own right, and once Muramana is completed, she's going to be doing a lot more damage than she already did in that fight. You know, all the front line for the side of Baljeet and the boys went down, and we were kind of looking like, oh, this is a pretty easy fight for Banana Gaming here, but then they just got turned on its head with that range from the Senna, who I believe, is she only at 40? Yeah, only at 48 souls, so it doesn't even have the crazy long range yet, and is still able to remain basically untouched through that entire team fight and still able to pump out some damage. I think a notable point to make as well was the fact that I believe Gameplank Bot was forced out very quickly, so was Deeks. Archine was pretty much untouched that entire fight, and if he can continue to play like that, it will be so dangerous for Banana Gaming to even attempt an engage. Yeah, definitely, and you, you have to, if you're the side of Banana Gaming, you got to make sure that if Petrifying Gaze is used, that you're tr not trying to pick a fight immediately afterwards. You know, that is such a big spell that can turn an entire team fight on its head. And when it's down, with how strong Senna and Syndra are, you may think twice about actually committing to a fight. You know, if you find a, one or two people, you can try to go for a pick. But full-on fighting without Petrifying Gaze available can lead to disasters. It almost did there. They were three Senna auto attacks away from everyone dying. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the flash forward actually almost secured it. Was able to secure one, bringing the score up to 4-1-6 and six for Archfiend. Had a very solid run, actually uh, catching up with Dinks. So both ADCs uh, sitting very close to the 10k mark uh, for their team. So they're going to be carrying most of these fights through. Very excited to see if they can pull it off and if they can position properly without getting caught. 
we do see uh, now we're about 23 and a half minutes in, but I mean, only three towers taken and three dragons, which feels extremely low for a game of this caliber. Yeah, it does seem a bit low. They've been opting into some more fights, as evidenced by the 11 to 10 kill score at this point in the game. But, you know, the side lane difference is going to start being uh, a point of contention here between the teams. As, you know, Irelia is up in farm, but probably still can't win the 1v1. And probably won't be able to for a while here. And if Darius ends up getting a couple more kills in a fight or even just another solo kill in the side lane, you know, this Darius with Ghost it will just require two people to be there pretty much at all times, which will open up Baron. Yeah, and I want to talk about this because now we actually have a break in a lot of the action, right? It's been pretty action packed for the past few minutes. Uh, the side lane pressure and the macro gameplay from both these teams, you know, it feels like Banana Gaming have to be on top of the game. They can't drop a single point because they don't have the extra teleport in that top side. Where do you think they're going to put a lot of their pressure? Do you think they're going to keep uh, doing this 1-3-1 or do you think they're going to switch to a 4-1? What do you think is their best determining uh, decision to really take a hold and break this game wide open? Yeah, it, it's it's hard to say because Darius has been trying to group up with the team a lot, trying to, you know, be there because he does bring a lot of power to a fight. But he's also so strong that he would probably go untouched in a side lane as well. But he seems to really want to spend his time grouped up with the team. And when you have Ghost on the Darius, I, I don't think that's as worth as if you had Teleport. Because it only it means the only gangplank can really be splitting if you are in fear of losing the Baron, as we do have the next dragon coming up soon. Ace is trying to get in a position for an interesting flank Ooh. here. Yeah, and that was a very cheeky ward thrown over the side. So Savage able to skirt away from death. Very nice little hold there. We do see the rest of them trying to set up. That's going to be noobs putting out a lot of vision. But a nice grounding actually keeps Ace zone in, and that's going to be Ace forced out with about a fourth of his oh. HP. That's going to be Ace in the hole actually oh. taking it. Dinks, dinks. Ace right there with that Ace in the hole. Yeah. That is a ridiculous blunder coming out of Ace right there. As soon as Dragon came up, you do not want to do that as a jungler. Yeah, getting caught out before an objective is probably the number one cause of your team losing an objective, actually. You see it all the time in solo queue. You know, your, the enemy jungler just goes up a little too far. You pick him off, and then your team's like, hey, let's Baron. Five versus four, let's go. And then you end up losing a Baron, and the game snowballs out of control from there. So thankfully for Baljeet and the boys, just a Drake. Unfortunately, it's one of the most powerful singular dragons in the game, giving you that 10% ultimate CDR. So, you know, soul point would be very scary, or is very scary. Getting that air soul with all of the follow-up that can come out of this banana gaming team is pretty scary to think about if you're Baljeet and the boys. And you really need Ace to step up, because he's past the point where Lee Sin can be useful as a damage, like, carry, and he's more of the kick bot Lee Sin now, where he needs to try and land these amazing kicks from out of nowhere to to really turn a fight on its head. If he can put Gangplank Bot in his team once the Petrifying Gaze is down, you know, then they can win a fight really easy. Or if he can get Dinks out of a fight, or if he can land just a, a big kick kicking Sedge into everyone or kicking Darius into everyone, he can still provide value to the team. Yeah, stun for stun. Uh, he definitely can, but we see a fight on this bottom side as both these guys are going ham right now. Gangplank and Zion are going tail to tail, oh. but Gangplank is able to make it out. The snake says no thank you as Wait. he collects the solo kill. Irelia has a Trinity Force and just bought a Black Cleaver as well. Oh, that man. is that is definitely an interesting item by considering the only true tank on the enemy team is Sejuani. And Lee Sin already has a Black Cleaver. Yeah, they don't. That's... They don't stack. <laughs> they just. They just stack up quicker if multiple people with Black Cleavers hit the same person. We're gonna try and start up the Baron now with no Zions available. But yeah, I think Irelia would be better off for a Wits End. Yeah, teleport coming in for Game Point Bot. So that's gonna be five members moving in here. Zion's still quite low. This might be a Zion's has TP coming in from Ace. Ace might try, but he does not get it as it is secured by Dunker Knots. 
Ace is able to go down for his troubles, and that's going to be the Baron secured for Banana Gaming. Yeah, relatively painless, actually. It did cost him some health bars, but actually, it, Dunkernaut was the one who secured it, so not sure if Ace and Eagle just didn't smite it. You know, that's kind of the jungler's mind game where you just kind of go and you both just kind of chill in the pit for as long as possible and wait and play chicken with each other. <laughs> but uh, Dunkernaut got it done. That mid lane, collect a tower plate and just say, all right, you're not going to come to us, we'll come to you. Yeah, and now this is the part of the game where Cassio gets terrifying. You know, she's level 17 actually already. Only has three items, but those three items are very strong. Even just Leandre's on Cassio with the tier completed is a lot you add in that protection of the Banshee's Veil, and you saw how fearless Gangplank Bot was to actually run up on the Irelia and Lee Sin and just start dealing damage to them. And this will be soul points, so now they will have the Air Soul, which grants you that 10% movement speed, grants you that crazy movement speed when you start ulting. So imagine you dodge the Solar Flare from Leona. Well, guess what? Now she's speeding at you with Moby Boots and the, the Air Soul as well. And there's not a whole lot of ways for Baljeet and the boys to come back in this game. Everything kind of has to go perfect from this point onward for them. Otherwise, I think they're going to end up losing this one. Yeah, short of Banana Gaming just walking in and allowing themselves to die one by one. I don't think they're coming out with anything. I mean, look at the bounty gold as well. Sitting on the side of Banana Gaming, we see 150 on E-Girl Jungle. We see 450 on Gangplank Bot. And Dink sitting with a massive massive 700 gold bounty whoever collects this kill is going to be sitting with a sweet sweet thousand gold uh for getting the last hit ace coming over the wall actually lands but one auto attack was enough to check him out to half he has to use the uh the kick to actually escape that was one auto attack from yeah. a level 15 dinks yeah he has 100 percent crit also has the storm razor so that storm razor slow even after it's been nerfed once or twice you know it's still slows for a lot and you saw just how much damage a caitlin with 100 percent crit can deal here um and you know ace has gotta get more creative than just jumping over a wall and trying to kick flash because i think that's what he was going for he's got to get more creative than that and you know we were talking about cassio being scary but dinks has become a monster and done it really under the radar actually six two and six hundred percent crit has a stopwatch even so ace is gonna have a hell of a time doing anything to anyone at this point in the game yeah i almost feel that the black cleaver might not have been the best choice you know if you're going aggressive you usually want to take a look at the uh you know you want to go for the ga instead as a second item if you're gonna try and be that big kick machine uh but without that ga he runs the risk of just immediately dying as he jumps in so as you said you know not the best choice e-girl jungle running interference here zach zion oh. actually is able to find the catch misses the Vanguard's Edge, but is able to push them all out. Zion has to dash away now, and the rest of the team is going to help collapse. Another nice root and stun, but look at the kiting coming out. This is all five members, but look at the backline. Dunker not, and Gangplank Dunker. Bot are here to say hello. It does look like Valjee were able to collect one, but this might be their doom as they all collect inside of the shroud. They're running oh. away. Nice pull. Pulls bring is, uh, brings two back in, and that's going to be the ace of the hole, finishing off Archfiend as well. A triple kill for D. Look at that movement That's speed! Game. And that is the move speed from Dunkernaut saying, get back here. This is our time. They collapse, they take the kills, and they're going to take the base. Yeah, and this may actually just be the end of the game right here. Ace trying to go in for a kill. We'll pick one up. We'll die for it. That should be it right there. And you saw just how quickly the Darius ran. I believe he got the, the Trinity Force Phage passive from killing a minion when he queued through that wave and that's all the movement speed he needed air drake took the wheel from there chased him down and this is going to be game one going over to banana gaming yeah 30 34 minutes on the dot 21 to 12 four dragons to one i mean it was slow going from the beginning and then banana gaming just turned it on yeah it, it got to the point where darius couldn't really be answered in the side lane he kind of didn't commit to it but gangplank bot was just running up on people spitting his poison throwing the fangs out without a care in the world of being killed by anyone dinks got really strong all of a sudden ended the game 10 and 2 we weren't even talking about him really ended up with 100 percent crit and doing a bunch of damage and you know they had themselves a fantastic game one 
and it was just kind of is just kind of prophecy once ace didn't get a whole lot done in the early game was that cassio will outscale syndra and while senna does scale very well just built lethality needed a last whisper item to actually do anything to e-girl jungle with all the armor built and you know it's kind of the trap of senna sometimes is you build all this lethality but if they have a tank if they have the said juani or the orn you need an actual last whisper even with the double black cleaver you know that's still only 24 percent of their armor that's still a lot of armor to cut through when lethality is flat numbers yeah, I mean, we were talking about it before, right? With Ace, you know, a little bit out of position. I feel that there are points where you could almost say he was over-ganking, you know, over-aggressive uh, in some stances, right? Uh, do you think this is going to cause him trouble in the next few games? Or, I mean, do you think this is just kind of a one-time thing? Well, Baljeet well, and the boys are in a tie for first place right now for a reason. They obviously know how to win games, and when things go wrong... You know, they they only lost two games, so actually they, they were just technically undefeated up until that one series they lost, then if they've only lost two games. So we'll see if they have that mental fortitude, actually, because uh, according to record, they haven't really been tested with a loss without actually losing the series. So we'll see if Banana Gaming can come back with a comp, because you have to imagine they're not going to be able to play the same champions again. Something's going to end up changing in the draft. But Ace really just needs to do a quick little mental reset and come back out swinging for game two because if you're going to draft these early game comps or these mid game comps, you really need your early aggressive jungler to make things happen. He's in the right place at the right time, couldn't get it done, and then after that point it was just a non factor in this game. All right, well, we'll definitely have to see if they can pull it off. Once again, Banana Gaming have gone up 1 0 in the race for first place. We'll have to see if Belgi and the boys are able to bring it back as quickly as possible or if they're going to fall 0-2. Oh, Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with game number two of the Upsurge Minor League Series tonight. Don't go anywhere. Sweet tonight. 
Uh, banana gaming and biology and the boys we do have uh, straight into pick and ban phase here and the boys on blue side and immediately the darius j4 and cassie via banned away about ba biology and the boys at uh, taking away two priority picks that they had previously yep definitely in two picks that helped secure them that game one the cassio got really strong uh, in the mid game, Darius was just a force to be reckoned with. Did die that one time, but other than that, was just there doing Darius things. And Baljeet and the boys will run it back with the Caitlyn this time around, whereas Banana Gaming will come back with Leona and add Misfortune to their arsenal. So, very strong bullying bottom lane drafted by Banana Gaming so far. Yeah, it's almost like we saw a complete turnaround from what it was before. Trading ADCs, uh, you know, support. Uh, obviously is going the same way so as you say to banana gaming gating their favorite support you know the leona being able to set everything up now the question is what they're gonna do with that top and mid lane for Belgium, uh, uh for banana gaming you know how are they gonna play this out do you think we're gonna have a similar composition or do you think we're gonna have like almost a brand new situation occur well they could run a very similar comp they have a kind of bowling bottom lane just like they did last time around but facing off against the caitlin can make things a little bit different depending on how the Caitlyn plays. Plus, Orn was left up. I didn't even notice. I thought Vlad was Orn just seeing the red, but Orn dropping to blue side third pick in priority is kind of interesting, actually, considering that the nerfs aren't the end of the world for him and he's been 100% pick ban, uh, you know, first rotation either side. So we'll see what they want to answer with. And it looks like it's going to be the Mordekaiser. So you know, Mordekaiser does have some options to deal with Orn, does do percent health magic damage in his own right, and is able to interrupt Call the Forge God if he's able to send Orn to the Death Realm before he knocks it back through. So is able to interrupt Orn a little bit. And I think they kind of planned this by picking Braum when they did. They're just like, you know, what? we're just not even gonna, you know, not even gonna give an option here, even though Leona was already picked. We just want Braum on our side to make sure that we get all the protection. We have the horn. They have the engage and disengage as that ban seems to have glitched out, and that is a Mundo ban. So Yeah. Uh again, Pro Draft has a little wonky time, but that is going to be uh Mundo and now a Galio possible ban out. So yeah, that is gonna be 
Uh, Banana Gaming saying, okay, we don't want any of these big team fight champions to go your way on the other side. Diana Band away, a big bully champion in the current mid lane meta. Uh, one that many people would just rather not play against. Yeah, Diana, very strong. Did get buffed up for jungle a little bit. Uh, her passive does deal extra damage to monsters now. As Rise will be locked in, leaving a jungle pick presumably for the final pick as Gragas is picked up as well, so that will not be Orn jungle. And Yasuo being locked in, so lots of knockups here between Call of the Forge God, Glacial Fissure, everything Gragas does. Plus Yasuo's own knockups provides ample opportunity for him to pop off. However, you know, Ryze and Mordekaiser aren't exactly the easiest customers to get picked off so easily by something like the Yasuo. So we'll see what Banana Gaming wants to jungle with their last pick here. May just go for Sejuani again. Will lock in the Sejuani once again, but few more obstacles to get around for Sejuani with Windwall and Bromshield both on the same side. Yeah, that's definitely true. And I mean, this time around, it feels like the composition is very solely based around, you know, certain aspects. With Banana Gaming this time, they lock in a double AP, meaning Rise and Mordekaiser are able to go in either direction uh, if they so wish. Uh, that is one of the things that they can do. Uh, however, on the other side, for the side of Baljean and the boys, they have drastically forced themselves almost into a pigeonhole situation. Uh, Gragas is a champion that I feel has their own tendencies to kind of, you know, either go very damage heavy or not. But all of their eggs are vastly in this Yasuo pick. If Yasuo falls, their composition definitely falls afterwards as well. Yeah, and I know Gragas is super popular in professional play, but for me personally, down in a lower level, it, it feels hit or miss. Gragas feels like one of those champions that either gets everything done early, is is strong enough damage-wise to where he can do enough damage and survive through the Zhonya's stasis and the damage reduction on his W to where he's able to get out and not get blown up at the start of a fight. But if you fall behind, you're just absolutely completely useless. You don't do enough damage to, you know, to kill anyone. Um, you have less AP, so you have less damage reduction on your W. If you're not able to afford Zhonya's, you don't even get the stasis. So, Gragas can be hit or miss, but when you combine it with Yasuo, it does allow very, very easy setup for Yasuo. You can land multiple man knockups with your uh, ultimate, obviously, as well as body slamming people around to add knockups for Yasuo. Plus, Orn. You know, Orn can knock up everyone, and Yasuo can last breath onto that. Braum can do the same thing. They have a lot of protection from things like Sejuani and Rise with Braum Shield and Windwall. So, you know, Baljeet and the boys have themselves quite a team comp. Like you said, however, if Yasuo does the solo queue special going 0 and 10, things could get rough. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we also are looking at a few uh, swap ups here, actually. So, Asen, Zion, uh, or Juxon, maybe. Uh, again, whoever knows how to pronounce his name, please correct me, but we'll be going with Juxon now. Uh, <laughs> but we do see Ace and Juxon actually lane swap. So Ace now in the top side and Juxon now in the jungle. So a change of potential play styles as well. Not only that, uh, I believe Malefic was, uh, was Malefic the support last game? I believe so. Um, I might be going crazy. However, on the other side, we do have E-Girl uh, jungle being swapped out for I think I'm okay, who is their starting jungler. Yeah, he was there during the Banana Bowl, the best, best series of all time. <laughs> banana Bowl was amazing. But, and Baljeet uh, and the boys are going through their own Banana Bowl. They did actually play Banana Bread Boys last week and playing Banana Gaming now, so... Bananas everywhere once again. <laughs> we just don't see Soraka because she got nerfed. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we are looking at uh, pretty furious team comps here. And so I want to get your uh, your final opinion here, you know, with the teams, who do you think has, you know, the right win conditions to really take over this game? Last time we saw it pretty much a stalemate up towards about that 15 to 16 minute timer. Yeah, um, you know, once again, Banana Gaming drafted pretty good scaling with Rise. They don't have the, the, the super scaling ED carry like they did. Misfortune does do pretty fine later on, but not necessarily like Caitlyn or Senna. Yasuo scales well as long as he doesn't far beh fall behind. Orn obviously gives you all the upgraded Orn items, so if the game goes long enough, that's a lot of free gold to be injected into your team. So 
I think it's just going to come down to how strong Mordekaiser and Yasuo get, respectively. Mm. Um, because we saw Dunkernaut win the matchup against uh, Juxins last time around. And Mordekaiser is kind of just AP Darius. So, you know, very similar champion. And if Ryze gets going, Ryze can actually deal more damage than Cassio. At least safe, more safely, you know, able to just E and it spreads through the whole team in a cube to do massive damage. Another one, and you probably killed the squishies at that point late late game. So, you know, it's going to come down to whether this Yasuo can get going and if Mordekaiser gets run over by Horn or not. <laughs> that will be the question. But again, this is going to be a possible deciding game if Banana Gaming are able to close it out. Or if Valjean and the boys are able to bring it back with this Yasuo uh, centered composition. We will be getting into game number two here very shortly. But before we do, I want to talk about one of our amazing sponsors, Kono. If you're looking to take your game to the next level, it all starts with your peripherals. From keyboards and keycaps to mice and more, our friends at Kono have got you covered. Kono have been huge supporters of us here at Upsurge and have made generous contributions to our prize pools. So if you need to find a new keyboard, uh, check out the Hex Gears X1 RGB low, pro low profile Bluetooth mechanical keyboard. You can use the discount code UPSURGEGG for 7% off your first order. For more information, head over to Kono.store to check out all they have to offer. So once again, go ahead, check them out uh, while we get into the intermission, but we'll be right back with game number two between Banana Gaming and Valjeet and the Boys.
and welcome ladies and gentlemen to game number two between the banana gaming and the squad of Baljeet and the boys we do have some crazy swap ups i feel in terms of champion pools coming out we see the yasuo in the mid lane this time around with a double ap composition coming out of banana gaming yeah and it is kind of a 180 from playing syndra to playing yasuo you know syndra you just kind of sit back pose your will on space and time around you to summon dark spheres, all that good stuff. Now you're just, uh, you're, now you're just Genji. Now you need healing. <laughs> oh man, how correct you are. It is such a huge swap up. And I mean, we were talking about it uh, during the intermission, you know, talking about the potential of a kind of big risk, right? It's almost like a coin flip situation. If Juxon is not able to help that mid lane, if Harrison is not able to get a lead on his own, there's a drastic chance that a lot of the fighting power out of Baljin and the boys falls off very heavily. Definitely. And relying on a Caitlyn is only source of DPS. I mean, it, it, it's alright later on, but everyone knows about Caitlyn's mid-game power trough, and that's when your Yasuo is supposed to start coming online. So if they can't get to that point, they'll, they'll have some issues. We already see the trades back and forth. Harrison not going to have a fun time against the Rise. Rise, one of the premier powerhouse bullies in that mid lane. His combos are ridiculous. It is so painful to play against that points. Yeah. Yeah, kind of yeah. like Cassio, though. Can burn through <laughs> your mana pool really, really quickly early on. So mm -hmm. that's something to keep an eye on, especially if you are Juxon's. Is, that's the time to gank Rise is when he's used up a lot of his mana. And. You're able to actually get in on there and not get rune prisoned on up and actually able to try and find a kill yeah absolutely we're seeing a very slow start but here we oh. go nice jump in with an early level three gank from i think i'm okay that's gonna be the slowing power as double flash on and the stun and root goes down on the malefic and that's oh. gonna be first blood going over to dinks as he is on the board once again oh see so a jump Engage. back in that's gonna be an immediate combination as archfreen now loses his flash as well so summoner list in the bottom lane at three minutes yeah only Brahms ignite and dinks's heal are available you know dinks flashing in to pick up that first blood on the misfortune exactly what you want if you are a misfortune player to get going early on to become that mid-game powerhouse get your Essence Reaver in your Infinity Edge and just start going to town. Yeah. Oh, big knockup on this top side. Dunk or not now. Not in a good trade, but he does have the shield up, so he's getting the max axe. Actually got the max axe there, so you should kill. Now, not in a good spot. Has to flash away. And so both top lane is extremely low, so Dunk or not, not wanting to take that chance. And early on, Mordekaiser should do very well into the Orn. Once Orn gets the Abyssal Mask, however, depending on what Dunk or not decides to try and build obviously mostly just going for leandri's most mordekaisers do uh could stand better in an actual fight like that because he was going to end up having a flash out that last decimate would have likely killed him but now dunker not hasn't backed yet is kind of low doesn't have a shield built up this time to try and sustain so he's gonna need to back off and he is Oh, just kidding. He's he's staying. He's greedy. <laughs> well, I mean, he does have the Doran shield running, so I mean, he will be regaining health. One of the uh, big advantages to running such a uh, such a thing like a Mordekaiser is, you know, he doesn't have mana to worry about, so can easily sit there as long as he doesn't get hit, is able to sustain up. He's also running that Conqueror, so if any major trades come out, he is able to deal with it. Uh, but we do see the CS differentials going in favor right now of Ace, uh, up about 10 CS, and already forcing the waves under the tower, so he's very happy about where that is. Ooh, hold under the tower, so a couple holds, but we do see Juxon also on that top side applying that pressure. Yeah, and that's what you gotta do if you are Gragas, is, you know, get those engages off, try to get those body slam ganks going. And then once you hit six, you can actually do really disgusting things with the explosive cast, because we, we've all seen at some point, uh, knocking people backwards, throwing them sideways, and with combination with the Yasuo, should be very fun to watch mid-game. But yeah, top lane, Mor once Mordekaiser gets Leandre, should do all right, as it looks like Orn went for the uh, Bomby Cinder to get that push power going. And looks like the Stone Drake should go on over to Banana Gaming. 
Yeah, I mean, they notice and they read it correctly. Juxon showed on the top side, showed just in that tri bush. So immediately you saw the pings go down, even though Valji and the boys knew that Sejuani and Leona had moved towards the dragon, they didn't have the priority. So that affords an easy global objective going over to Banana Gaming, once again stacking their early lead. Yeah, and with the Sejuani and Mordekaiser on your team, getting those extra resistances, never a bad thing to have. And Leona, obviously, as well. So any resistances that you buy get multiplied a little bit, and a little bit's better than zero. Oh, absolutely. And we see uh, next dragon up on the board is that Infernal. So getting the best of both worlds, offense and defense. So very happy about that setup. While Archman continuously gets the poke, that's going to be another uh, unfortunate pause here. Uh, you just heard it, Ace, unfortunately, DC, but this does give us a little bit of time to talk about what's going on. Um, number one, the mid lane, as you can see, uh, Harrison is holding steady. However, the rest of the lanes had definitely seen some uh, sways back and forth. Who do you think currently has the upper hand? Well, right now, you can just see the gold lead is in the favor of Banana Gaming, and they did get a back off in the bottom lane. Misfortune bought two long swords and a dagger, so that will get some immediate power. However, Caitlyn has gold to go back and buy a BF sword, so that advantage will not last for too long. Yasuo can pretty much stay out as long as he needs to, as long as he doesn't die or get forced super low health. He can just kind of sit there push for free, doesn't have mana, has Doran's Blade to sustain, still actually hasn't burned his health potion that he bought at the start of the game. Uh, Gragas is up a camp in a little bit on the Sejuani, but the dragon did nullify that. But Gragas has some gold to go back and spend for himself, so he should probably be getting boots unless he took the boots. Rune, I didn't actually get a chance to see that during loading screen, so, you know, it is something some junglers do, but I don't like going boots or Nook Predator, because it kind of... Anti synergies itself in the early game. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the top lane as well, we see just a random assortment of components coming out for Ace. I mean, you see the rejuvenation <laughs> beads and fairy beads, uh, fairy charm as well. I mean, do you think this is the proper response to a Mordekaiser top here? Uh, I think so. Just due to the fact that Orn can actually buy items in lane, but he can't buy potions. So by buying those two things, you essentially have a health potion and a mana potion running at the same time. Something that uh, Valkyrin, if you've ever seen Valkyrin streams, would was a big fan of was in mid lane or support or ADC, whatever, wherever. If you feel like you're you're having a rough time saving up your mana, just buy a fairy charm. It's only 125 gold. You sell it for I think 70. At least it used to be. They might have nerfed it since then. So you only invest about as much as a potion to have that going the whole time. So in a lane against Mordekaiser, where it's just kind of a war of attrition, makes a lot of sense. Oh, I absolutely have to agree. You know, it's uh, it's efficiency at its best, and especially since you can buy it or create it right in lane, why not? Um, but the bottom side, you know, that early, early kill, uh, Ding's last game was a big, big powerhouse and a big reason why uh, Banana Game were, be, uh, were able to be so dominant, right? The uh, kiting potential that he had on the Caitlyn was massive. This time around, he's on that misfortune, the big wombo combo expert, do you think this early kill will immediately signal the end for Arshina and Malefic? Probably not, considering that Braum exists, can put up his E to block the bullet time, at least most of it. And later on, there's also Yasuo Windwell, so lots of ways to stuff bullet time, which is not necessarily the only reason you play Misfortune. Her autos are just fine. She has a little bit of self-peel. But overall, the bullet time is the big team fight presence, and having the ability to block it off just buys you some time to reposition yourself in a fight. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen the bounces as well. I mean, I think that's insane in itself, you know, watching the double up just crush down the health bars. But uh, as you stated, the team compositions are still well underway. We're only about 400 gold apart. So my question now is, you know, do you think they're going to start... Um, they're going to start putting pressure in certain lanes. I mean, we've seen the Gragas try and go topside, but, you know, we have pointed out, you know, Harrison needs some help in the mid lane if he wants to get rolling. Do you do you think we're going to start seeing some roams toward that mid lane, or do you think we're going to see uh, Jackson still try and play the side lanes? I think you drafted the Gragas Yasuo for a reason, and that reason yeah. is to set up knockups for the last breath to combo with. So 
I'm waiting to see them. Even if it's not in the mid lane, those two can roam top. They can roam bot. They can be in the jungle. We do have Rift Herald spawning relatively soon in about a minute and a half. So uh, that's when I'm looking for things to happen is around this Rift Herald because it's something that a lot of teams have gotten used to is swapping people around for that Rift Herald take and then swapping them back once it happens for the next Drake. So we'll see if that ends up happening. But yeah, look for the, the Gragas Yasso to start flexing their muscles a little bit here once we are unpaused. Oh, I, I can't wait for that either. I mean, I'm very excited. And, you know, we were talking about it before previously in the uh, in the pregame, you know, up to the series. Uh, as we get into game, we are sitting at about the 6 minute and 30 minute mark uh, right now. And so, you know, getting underway, we have the dragon just about four minutes out. But again, that top lane now is a potential for a uh -oh. fight. But we see a big fight in this bottom lane. Immediate oh. jump in. Oh, that's just heartbreaking to see directly out of a pause. And another little stun under the tower. As uh, we do see a nice go coming out from Dingsa. Uh, you know, that's just... With a pause that long, that's bound to happen sometimes. Yeah, you get your hands get a little cold. You don't have the hand warmers like they do in LCS and LEC. <laughs> you know, your hands get a little cold. Uh, Braum didn't even throw up the Unbreakable. That's how quickly that happened. Braum was just like, oh, I guess you're dead. Sorry, bud. <laughs> That's the unfortunate, you know, my B situation. Just, I, right, uh, sorry. Uh, but we are moving in 720 on the clock right now as the teams get well underway once again. And I mean, after that kill now, uh, Dink's up 2-0, sitting up about 15 CS as well. He is up 1K and that just... That's going to be so damaging, I feel, uh, for this upcoming mid-game. Yeah, and I was talking about how Archfiend was able to go by a BF sword compared to the components of Misfortune. Well, Misfortune finished the components into the Caulfield's Warhammer and has a BF sword as well. So, definitely looking rough. Obviously, Caitlyn does scale a bit better than Misfortune when it comes to pure DPS later on, especially considering the shields to block the ultimate. But, at this point, you got to be scared of the Misfortune Leona combo. You really can't discredit it. That's going to be an ult into the death realm. As we see a knockup as well. The Ornhorn was called out, but Ace trying to run away. Might not get it as a couple more auto attacks might One need more. it, but that's going to be a very close fight. And Dunkernaut, by the skin of his armor, is able to make it out alive. Death realm had fallen, but he was still able to pick up the solo kill in the top lane. Today I learned armor has skin. <laughs> Listen, I say what I can, okay? You don't, you don't bash on me for that, but still. Not bashing, uh, <laughs> it's fun to learn. But still, a very close top lane fight, but once again, going in favor of Banana Gaming. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing about having the Reju beat the Fairy Charm. You know, it's just a health pot running. It's not anything crazy, but looking for the knockup. Yeah, and I mean, they're doing it under tower. They do pull it off. Yeah. And you said it before, and it came true. They drafted the Gragas Yasuo combination for a reason. They're going to put it to work. Yeah, and Justin is doing a fantastic job of eating that tower aggro the whole time while Harrison picked up the kill, making sure that neither of them end up going down for that dive. Uh, did uh, invest the flash, however. Did get Gangplank Plot's flash out of it as well, so... Overall, very good combination. Shows them that, hey, we, we, we can do this. We're not out of this series just because we're down 3-1. to one. Absolutely not. Only 400 gold uh, separates them all, but we saw a little bit of a move up. You actually saw Harrison and Juxton start making their way towards that top lane, but because Dunkernaut was able to fall back just a little bit, not going to be able to pull off that top lane gank. Yep, Rift Child. Uh, taking an adventure down towards the mid lane. <laughs> Shelly said, I want to come too. <laughs> play, play. <laughs> it did not work as, again, it resets. But, I mean, moving along towards this mid game, we do see the dragon coming up in just a few seconds. Uh, and so that's going to be a big one, the Infernal Drake, as we stated before. Uh, it might have felt a long time uh, ago that we talked about it, but still. Infernal <laughs> plus a Mountain Drake just means that you are buffed in every single basic aspect of uh stat wise yep definitely and another thing to keep an eye on is yasuo building wit's end against the double ap comp will mean that he's pretty well equipped to go against either rise or mordekaiser in the side lane once the game gets towards that point so delaying the crit power spike just a little bit but i think wit's end is a very strong item and should be built on just about anyone who can build it 
where it makes sense. It's just it's just so strong. Yeah, it's a nasty little item to build. It's a cheeky one as well, but that's going to be the dragon taken down. Two dragons going over to Banana Gaming. And I mean, throughout this entire series so far, they have been on a tear with the global objective game. Yep, we will have Ocean Soul coming in here. So lots of bushes and stuff in that end game of ocean soul and i still think ocean soul is kind of a game winner here whoever can claim it just gets so much free power that you essentially just win the game based off it you literally just get to hit anything and then you just start healing back to full it's actually crazy and i feel that definitely works in favor of you know the mordekaiser and i mean the uh rise as we do see ace once again get uh, once again getting jumped on not able to do anything outside the realm as he just falls to the burn damage and dunk or not Picks up his second solo kill of the game. Yeah, and you saw him trying to use his unbreakable to, or his Bell's Breath to get out, but here comes the combo. Yeah, they on, do come up, but up. Dunkerman able to fight just a little bit. Gets exploded backwards, though, and the ultimate to follow the last breath does claim Dunkernaut's life as Harrison is now on the board. Yeah, I was a little scared there because he didn't ult off the body slam. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the explosive cask. Must have been on cooldown for a little bit, but oh, good dodge. Yeah, I actually think when the body slam landed, they didn't actually have any vision of Dunkernaut. And so there was no way for uh, Harrison to actually proc it. That's why the explosive cask had to come out. So a little bit slower, but still, they got the kill. That's all they needed. Here we go in that mid lane, though. A little bit of a fight coming out right now. Orn, he just came back and teleported towards that mid lane, and now he might die again. He has flash available, flashes wow. just a little bit further away, not over the wall, but I mean, burning both summers within the span of about 30 seconds after your death, that has to feel bad. Definitely, especially after what happened to Ace in game one, in a new role, trying to, trying to clear his head, get a new start, and things not going well for him so far in game two, and you know, you gotta stay mentally tough in situations like this where you're just not having a good time, you gotta still find your way, your ways to contribute wherever you can. Now, I do want to point out something really interesting. Even though it's four kills to two, even though Rift uh, Herald was just taken by the side of uh, this Banana Gaming squad, as we actually see Harrison getting jumped on right now. Nice solo foot actually lands. Windwall is up, so they can't immediately go in. As they're trying to fight it out, this is a split fight, as it is going to be Banana Gaming jumping down the throats of Baljeet and the boys as they just hard collapse every single summoner spell is being used but the stun this might oh. actually be a kill as Harrison is surviving for so long they danced it properly and that's only gonna <laughs> be a one for zero that was such a well and truly extended fight in favor of Baljeet and the boys as they are able to mitigate the loss to only one death and the low-key MVP of that was noobs landing that last stun onto Harrison as the explosive cast came out Otherwise, you also would have been able to last breath on in and probably would have picked up at least one kill and probably tried to make it come back for another as well. So, gotta appreciate those little Leona things, just trying to keep mm -hmm. someone CC'd as much as possible. Yeah, and I mean, we saw that wind wall was, uh, you know, the big deciding factor because that meant no Glacial Prison, uh, no spells coming out of Gangplank Bot. I mean, that was a nasty setup that they had, but... Uh, still looking at it, I mean, gold, even though it's 5-2, to two, it's still relatively close, only about 700 gold difference, and I mean, most of that actually comes from that jungle positioning. We see 500 gold difference uh, in favor of Juxon, and then in that mid lane, we see a drastic 1.2 in favor of Harrison. So, I mean, we were wondering if Harrison would be able to carry his weight. And this time around, I think he's got it in the bag. Yep, definitely, but Malefic Truth caught out a little bit here. Yeah, a little bit of a stun jump in, but Juxon is ready over Whoa. the wall, and that's going to be the last breath. That's going to be a big combination, and Noobs is definitely going to fall for that one. They are able to secure the kill. They draw the teleport out from Mordekaiser as well. So an easy kill pickup secured by, I believe, Harrison. Yeah, and this will buy Ace some time to push up the wave and walk down for this next Drake as uh, Dunkernaut is backing, so not going to be around, but Dink's in some trouble, perhaps? Yeah, oh! oh, the flashy play is real, ladies and gentlemen, as they jump all the way in. That's going to be the shutdown coming out from Olympic and Juxon with the style breaking out the moves on the dance floor. Yeah, those are the those are the hypey plays that Gragas players can do right there. You E and then reposition it to knock them both 
into the air. Unfortunately, no last breath available. That would have been insane if that worked like that. It ended up happening that way. But even still, getting that kill, even though it went over to Braum, better out to get on someone on your team than nobody. So should buy them an Ocean Drake, which, you know, will help them out, give them even more sustain as they look to try to make things happen here going into the mid game. And with the first dragon, they are on their way to collecting a much stronger lead than they had in game number one. Uh, this time around, a lot of the tower plates were not taken. Uh, I think a few in the mid lane were taken by Harrison, but we see the Orn calling out. The Ram flies just past uh, Dunker Knot. Nothing held right there except uh, lessening the damage on the top lane tower. Yeah, just for a little bit of wave clear. Unfortunately, you end up having to use it for that, but you know, he's in a rough spot, but Harrison in a bit of a rough spot. Yeah, and that's gonna be a big fight going in, and Gangplank bot is taking quite a bit of damage as another knockup misses, but this is gonna be another collapse from Noobs. That is such a painful experience to get camped this hard. Noobs fix up his first kill of the game. Yasuo now down uh, his first death of the game as well. Yeah, they were trying to donate that kill over to Gangplank bot on the rise. Unfortunately, unable to do so. In situations like that, you just want to get the kill, especially with a champion as slippery as Yasuo. You don't want your next minion wave to come in and give him six more dashes, so... Yeah. <laughs> better to just kill him and get it over with than sit there and try to donate it. Yeah, that is going to be at 1715. We are seeing the mid tower being broken down right now. A very strong push, and actually the bottom lane as well falling, and that signals Archfiend having to run away as the tower fell and News was on the hunt for that kill. Yeah, the mid tower will stay alive though, is it? Blue buff invade coming in. Looking like, I think I'm okay, I already got it. Heading on out. Now, the gold lead has definitely ballooned to about 2.3k in favor of Banana Gaming. And I mean, this is what I was kind of wondering about because again, they held such great advantages towards those global objectives. They were the first ones on those two dragons. Do you think this is a pattern we'll be able to see uh, continuously throughout this game, or do you think Balgin and the boys will be able to come back and start claiming some of those objectives? They can definitely come back and claim objectives. You know, the Gragas Yasuo combo, just so insanely powerful if you're able to execute it properly. And if Banana Gaming continues to try to uh, fight right before the objective comes up, it gives them an opportunity to lose that fight before the objective comes up. And when you do that, you end up giving away the objective. So, you know, they just need to clean it up a little bit on the side of Banana Gaming and they should be all right. But it's always the Yasuo comp, so you can never give up on Yasuo. Uh, you never can. I mean, he's not going the 1 in, or the 0 and 10 like we normally see in solo queue, you know. What we call the solo queue special right there. Uh, however, the for the amount of pressure he's drawn to the mid lane, he's surprisingly kept up in farm. He's about 30 CS up. Uh, against Gangplank Bot, and I mean, we've seen at least three mid lane collapses coming out of Noobs and I think. So, I mean, he's drawn so much pressure and done so well for himself so far. Yeah, not only that, but everyone in this game is farming rather well, actually. You know, about uh, we see Dinks at 200 before 20 as Last Breath comes out. Yeah, and that's actually going to be a draw into the death realm. I don't think this is what Dunker, uh, Dunker not wanted, as he's now in a 1v1 situation. But he's going to trade oh. it out as Harris did. It tries to flash away and still gets killed. Juxting tries to come in, flashes, but now he's going to get collapsed on as the rest of the five oh, man, man squad of Banana Gaming just say, all right, this is ours. You don't get a piece of it. Yeah, look a little touch and go there when he pulled Yasuo into the death realm. Once you get below half health, that's when the Wits and healing comes in, and generally you can stay at about the half health mark. But Dunker not able to put down enough damage to kill Harrison. Looks like the Ignite wasn't used, must have still just barely been on cooldown. Otherwise, probably could have been able to pick up the kill there. Not able to transition to a tower just yet, but I think I'm okay is doing work on the Rift in the pit. Rift Herald. But it's barren now, actually, 20 minutes into the game. And Gangplank Bot having his way with Ace. Yeah, I mean, he actually ulted in, so Gangplank Bot has nothing available to really get back out follow over so that's gonna be a flash out from ace and he's gonna be able to make it out safely but still ultimate for flash i think inkling bot will be very happy about that yeah definitely and <laughs> ace still having a hard time getting anything done so far this game has just kind of been in the side lanes pushing is keeping up in cs though so that is definitely something positive to look for there 
does have his abyssal mask complete looks like he's building towards sunfire cape or ninja tabby now getting close at level 13 mark where the Orin upgrades start coming in for himself and then 14 and on he can upgrade teammates items and that will bring a lot of value considering there will be two infinity edges for him to upgrade as well as the Zanya's hourglass and whatever Braum ends up deciding to build yeah, both supports have actually met each other in that bush. That's going to be a solo player cutting off Malefic's uh, decision making there, but that's a beautiful Glacial Prison as they do catch Whoa! on Arshin. He has to flash away and heal. Whoa! He is going to keep running, but there it is. Noob's able to collect the kill as he has to run away as well. That's going to be a solid pickup of the ADC, and that's going to open up the Dragon for Banana Gaming. Explosive Cast and Last Breath are available if they can find a fantastic combo for it. Now would be the time. Now would be the clutch moment to do it. No Call of the Forge got available. No Glacial Fissure available. Oh, Juxon actually made it over the pit, so he's going to walk forward. Doesn't get the smite as he has to quickly dance out. No, he gets dragged in. Oh. He just goes straight down. Such a beautiful setup, and he was not able to get the steal. Such an unfortunate situation. So he is going to go down, and that might be Baron being pinged, but... Uh, that is such a dire loss for the side of Falgeet and the boys. Yeah, definitely. Don't think they can do Baron. The death timers are a little bit on the short side right now. Well, they're going to go for it. They waited a bit. Gragas can come back, and they have the explosive cast last breath combo. Yeah, they do. And I mean, I, I think they... Call the Forge Gods up now, too. Yeah, ultimates. Big ultimates are up. Down to about 4k. No Gragas available. There it is. Uh, oh, oh the Forge God lands on everyone. That's going to be the last breath combo. And that's a big fight that they want. Holding to the Death Realm is the Braum, I believe. And that's going to be a big fight. As all the Death Towers are, uh, all the health bars are low. Baron just spin on He's everyone. It doesn't it. kill. MVP is Baron. As that will secure it. Baron is oh, still no, going to be in. there. And that is such a big win for Belgian and the boys. A botched Baron fight leads to a one for five ace and Belgian and the boys are back in this game. Yeah, and I think I'm okay. Had an opportunity to come back in and steal it, but was a little late jumping back in with the Arctic Assault. There's one Molten Edge coming in there and now the Orn items are coming in. They have Baron. They should be able to get this tower. They could push for the next one if they wanted to, but just gonna play it safe. Back on up, however, Banana Gaming is on Soul Point and Ocean Soul, big time win con there. Well, not necessarily a win con, but something where it makes it really hard for you to, to win a team fight against the Ocean Soul with all that healing coming out. You're going to need to invest in some Grievous Wounds big time if you end up losing that. Yeah, and I mean, that, I mean, you pointed it out like 20 seconds before they even started it, you know. That Baron was very, very risky. The ultimates were available. The combinations were available. And you have to realize and respect the fact that Harrison is a very strong force to be reckoned with right now. Up 40 CS, has two and a half items complete. He will not die unless you focus everything on there. Uh, I think a big thing also, Dunkernaut didn't grab a priority member. I think he only grabbed a Malefic in there. So it just, it wasn't the right pull. So a very nice play coming out from the side of Belgian and the boys, and now Banana Gaming, they have to take a step back and be like, all right, we attempted to get a little cheeky, now we have to recover and get a hold of the game once again. Yeah, and now Harrison does have the Infinity Edge completed for himself as well, and as soon as Ace hits level 15, next time they meet, should get upgraded into a Molten Edge for himself. So Harrison, very, very strong on the Yasuo. Does not have the 100% crit just yet. He obviously went for Infinity Edge. Second does not have a Zeal item yet. But uh, Ace is here in the top lane trying to get level 15 so he can help on out and upgrade some more items. Not quite there, though. Yeah, I mean, just trying to farm. And, and there's been quite a bit of finding interspersed in between these last few minutes. So a lot of the players are trying to, you know, get back a little bit of the CS. Their CS has dropped a little bit, so it's like... All right, try and regain some of the lost gold that we have had to leave on the side plates. And check out what Gangplank bot is building here with the, the Glacial Shroud and the Crystalline Bracer going for that Righteous Glory. So a little bit of a more tanky Rise build. Uh, you know, obviously Rise still does scale with mana, but losing out on some damage by going for this, but deciding I need to be a little bit more defensive. Yeah, big issue I have. Yeah, he did go for the uh, Righteous Glory, it seems. So that's only going to be 10%. Uh, so I believe he is actually running that 40% build. 
that's going to be yeah 40 right there so again having that top tier uh, cdr is the mark of a good uh, rise however he's definitely not as dominant as we saw him last game so you know congrats to uh harriston for really shutting down that mid lane and making it his own yeah, definitely. And you even saw, even when he was faced up against Dunker Knot, who does have five kills on the opposing side, able to contain him in the side wave, at least with the Baron buff for sure. All that extra magic resistance that the minions get makes it hard for AP champions to wave clear against Baron. Uh, so Mordekaiser has a rough time against that. But with Baron gone, now we've got this next fight for this ocean, which is soul point for Banana Gaming. He also gets pulled in. Yeah, that's uh, um, usually the right signal you start, but again, they have to be worried. These these oh, are big, but that's going to be a nice glacial store, uh, glacial prison as they get the jungler. That's going to be a big kill as the rest of the team is fighting. Uh, Orin is in the back line trying to fight, but that is going to be Dunker not pulling him into the death realm. The rest of the team is fighting directly on the top, and they're going to actually have to drop. As they oh, bullet down. time! Big bullet time landing on everyone, draws everyone health bars, and Ding's coming up clutch. With that ultimate, sends the, of to the boys ga uh, scattering to the wind. Because that is going to be Harrison still available in Ace, but still, Valjean and the boys are forced off this dragon. And there's Ocean Soul picked up for Banana Gaming, only losing their support in that fight. Harrison got zoned out. I think Noobs was zoning him off, literally in his face, preventing him from following <laughs> up. Because that was like a three-man call of the Forge God that landed in that choke point. That could have been disastrous for Banana Gaming. So MVP of that fight goes to Noobs for keeping Hairston off. And, you know, now they got Ocean Soul. Now they have a little bit more leeway to kind of have carte blanche to kind of do whatever they want if they, if they really want to. But they should probably still play a bit conservatively as Yasuo is getting stronger and stronger, approaching the 100% crit mark. Yeah, that is true, but again, you're looking at it. Ocean Soul is available. They have gotten it, so I mean, they're healing. You know, Harrison has to go all or nothing right now, and if he is not able to secure that kill, you can assume that all of that aggression will be for naught. First yeah, item finally completed, too, for, uh, I think, uh, well, second, if you count the jungle item. He just finished the Warmog, so as you can tell, a little bit further behind uh, Juxon right now. Yeah, and actually does not have 3,000 health just yet. One more level up or a few more creeps dying if he took the, I forget the name of the rune, but the one that gives you health when things die around you. So shouldn't be too much longer before Warmlogs is active for the Sejuani. And it's a contrast in style compared to what E-Girl did in game number one, going for the Gargoyle Stoneplate instead of the Warmlogs. So looking for to be sustaining in fights, jumping out, healing back up, jumping back in. And with Ocean Soul, it makes sense, you know, if you have this giant health pool, you uh, hit someone with Ocean Soul and gain back a lot of it. See if they want to go in on Sejuani, I don't think they do. It also goes to show, you know, um, he's definitely playing for the long game. That's an item that you played for the very long con. That's going to oh. be a nice special prison as it lands, but call the Forge God of Retribution is there. Last breath. breath lands onto only the jungler, and he dies all the way in the back line. Harrison goes down. That's a big shutdown for Gangplank Pot. That's going to be the bull time stop by Ace helping his team survive, but he's gonna pay with his life. That's a double kill coming up for Game Playing Pot. As in the back line, Dunkernaut says, this is my oh. land. He claims the shutdown as well. And Dinks coming in the back line. Where did he come from? <laughs> he made it. They secure the Ace from out of nowhere. And Banana Gaming is back in control. I think Harrison felt a little too much pressure there to just dive the back line. Went in with the last breath. He had options. He was in the middle of team. Could have dashed back towards his team, could have dashed out towards the back line, decided to go for the back line and absolutely got obliterated. And that's not what you can, that's not good if you're Harrison at this point. You need to stay alive for as long as possible in these fights and do as much damage as you can. Him dying first, really bad for Baji and the boys. Yeah, that is one thing that you have to be worried about. I mean, you, we usually see, what is it, like third item GA coming out of a Yasuo that wants to dive that hard. A big thing is the last breath only landed on the one, which was the tank, so didn't get that armor reduction coming out as well. So these choke points are starting to show their prowess. You know, the choke points, depending on which team gets the initiation, can be a make or, make or break deal for either side. Yeah, and Harrison does have 100% crit even before that fight, did have the zeal. Now has the fully completed Phantom Dancer, so we'll have that extra little shield 
But another situation like that where he's in the middle of four of the enemy team, I don't think the Phantom Dancer Shield is going to make that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, I think he needs to get Guardian Angel ASAP if he's going to be trying to dive like that. Otherwise, he needs to play more like a midline carry. You know, not, not backline with Caitlyn, not frontline like Orn, but in between Orn and Caitlyn. He needs to be hitting whoever he can, doing as much damage as he can combined with the Caitlyn. Uh, Orn items are upgraded for just about everyone, only waiting on Malefic Truth to uh, get his locket upgraded, which should happen as soon as Ace Ding's level 17, I believe. So the Orn items are in pretty much full effect now. Oh, going in! Yeah, and that's going to be a fight, but Harrison says, oh, wait, you got buddies. That's going to be an unfortunate jump in. Isn't able to get the last breath uh, off once again on more than one member. And that's just the team of Banana Gaming going bonkers in this bottom lane, claiming that kill. And I mean, Harrison allowing his uh, allowing Banana Gaming to find an opening. And you even saw the little question mark thing coming in. Even Banana <laughs> Gaming is surprised that he went for that last breath. I was taken aback by it myself. I was like, wow, he actually went in for that. Okay. Yeah, Didn't quite have full vision, which makes it pretty scary to actually commit to that. And this will probably end up costing his team, if not the entire game, at least another inhibitor. Yeah, at least one, if not two. I mean, they still have Baron for, I think, another couple of seconds. So, I mean, they can keep pushing to try and end the game if they so wish. They got the tanks available. But it looks like they're saying, all right, play a little bit safer, play a little bit smarter. No, they're just waiting for the other wave. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting the wave because they still have about 10% of their Baron left, actually. So, little ways. Call the Forge God coming out. No Yasuo alive, just respawning now. Yeah, this is a Hail Mary as the Glacial. Uh, glacial. There's last breath. Yep, there it is. The big ultimate's going all over the place as they fight for their lives and their face. But the bullet time starts shredding everyone as Balji and the boys are running for their life right now. Harrison's Caitlyn goes dead. down. Yasuo goes down. The entire team is falling. Oh, the Realm Warp into the fountain! And, the hands, and they're going big! They're going in! They're fountain diving! They get the kill, the double kill oh, coming out, and I think actually goes down to the Nexus, or to the fountain laser, as they are going to claim the last kill as well. A crazy dive to end a very dominating game from Banana Gaming, and they will take the series 2-0. Gangplank bot actually teleported to the, the the top lane inhibitor tower to actually kill Juxins, who was running away at that tower. Just <laughs> a little bit of dominance shown at the end as Banana Gaming making a statement, actually, that they came in and took down Baljeet and the boys. And now, uh, depending on further results from tonight, I believe that means they are in first place in their group. Yeah, I mean, either way, they'll be fighting for first and second. With a quick 2-0, they should be pushed up uh, a little bit higher. However, they have done very, very well for themselves. And I mean, uh, again, I think it's crazy to see how well they adapted. The early game, definitely a little bit sketchy for them. Yeah, it's something to watch out for, especially when you know that the enemy team has the Gragas Yasuo. You know, positioning around a dragon, getting the vision in solo as a support, right before, like 40 seconds before a dragon is going to spawn, that's generally when the enemy team is going to be trying to do the same thing. So being alone like that is just asking to get picked off. And that's kind of what led to the mid-game lull that they saw. Also, that Baron call was a little bit on the sketchy side, to say the least. <laughs> to say the least is correct. I mean, they fought in the pit. They didn't back off. They said that they could do it. I mean, you also have to remember the amount of Baron damage that comes out. I mean, Baron was MVP. For the side of Algin and the boys right there, spitting all over them, getting the corrosive acid, you know, reducing the armor and magic resist. That's a massive change in terms of resistances, especially for something like a Sejuani. Yeah, and it's something you don't really think about too often, is that that debuff is huge. And you got these big AoE things to come in, like the Gragas ultimate. Call the Forge God does a good amount of magic damage as well. Obviously, proccing the brittle, doing percent health. When you have no MR, that's getting close to doing true damage. And a lot of damage to come on out. And they were all funneled up. And, you know, if they didn't do that and didn't get picked off before that dragon, it would have been a very clean game from Banana Gaming. So, you know, they showed their strengths. They showed their weaknesses. And all in all, their weaknesses aren't that bad. It's something that a lot of teams deal with is those calls like that. Oh, I have to agree, but uh, with that, that ends tonight's series. Banana Gaming taking it 2-0 and moving up 
to four and one in the standings. They had done very well for themselves and have uh, deserved the win. Uh, now, from all of us here at the casting desk for Upsurge Esports, my name is Orbital. I was joined here by Guster Posey. We were your casting duo. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a fantastic night. Later.